Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new Coco series that I'm calling Coco Architecture. The idea for this series, or the question that it's attempting to answer, is how do I approach building larger Coco applications? And this is a question that I get quite frequently um, on a lot of my Coco tutorials, is really how do different components fit together? Where should I put the code for doing this? Um, if I have a sidebar, for example, and I want to select something on the sidebar and have it change a different view, how do I build that? These are all sort of questions that are mostly design pattern related and also just where do I put my code related? Um, and something that I don't think Coco has a lot of uh, suggestions towards, like there isn't a very clear path. Um, you can really get away with murder with uh, Coco applications. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to try to address. Uh, with that said, I will say that I am not the expert on this. I do not claim to know the correct way of doing all this. I just think that I have at least some insight on some better ways to do things. So um, yeah, take that with a grain of salt. But uh, this is sort of just a discussion of ways that you can approach building Cocoa applications. Let's begin. So the first thing you'll note is uh, I've brought up the contacts application and then the contacts app that we're going to attempt to build. On the right, you can see uh, what the actual one is. This is the one that we're trying to build. And the one that we're trying to build is basically just a dumbed down version of the contacts app where it just loads in your contacts and you can see them. It doesn't really do much else, but this is a really good starter application to show how can you set up different components and how do those components uh, you know, control the things that they need to control. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this mostly is different controllers and how they relate to the project you might want to build. So looking at this contacts app, we can see that there are a bunch of components that stand out, at least they should. So one thing that I notice is there is a window, there is a split view, right? So we have a split view here, and this uh, has a bunch of views in it. Notably, there is a view on the left, and there's a view on the right. Those are the two distinct views that I see in this application. So in my mind, I'm already thinking, all right, window controller, right, to control the window. Then I have the split view controller to control the split view stuff. And then there are the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? There, there's then uh, the uh, left view controller, and then there's the right view controller. So those are the main components that I think of when, I, when I'm looking at this. The other things that I am going to kind of address in this particular tutorial is that we have sort of a visual effect view. Notice that when I make different selections, right, that changes the thing on the right. And I should note that this uh, tutorial is going to be broken up into two. So there's going to be the first one right now and the second one that we'll approach um, next time. Okay, so when I start a new Cocoa application, the first thing I look at is uh, obviously Xcode, but I make a new uh, Cocoa application and uh, what I'm going to be using is going to be using nibs. Uh, I still use nibs for basically every project that I've ever done. But uh, if you're using storyboards at this point or you want to use storyboards, feel free to do that. I think it'll be an interesting exercise for you to follow along with storyboards. And storyboards are probably even more, probably even easier to follow along with because they sort of structure the application in such a way that there are these window and view controllers. So I think uh, follow along if uh, you're, you know, you do all your stuff in the, the storyboard land. If you do all your stuff in code, all of this applies across the board. So all these concepts you can apply in any any facet of uh, or any way that you you work with Kogo. All right. So the first thing that I do with any new nib based project is I go to this window that's in the main menu nib and I delete it because I hate the fact that that window is there. And the reason I hate that is because uh, this outlet is connected to the app delegate. So the app delegate has a reference to this window in the main menu nib and this already confuses, I'd say, over 50% of the people that try uh, Cocoa applications. It confused me when I started. It probably confuses everybody when they start, really. But um, the general idea that you have going into Cocoa applications, if you haven't done iOS stuff, is, well, here's the app delegate. It has a reference to my window, so I should just put the code in the app delegate. And I have seen people make Cocoa applications where they literally have thousands of lines of code in the app delegate, and it controls about four different windows. And it's just painful, right? You can't, you can't build an application and then do something else with it later if you have thousands of lines of code in your app delegate. 
don't do it, right? Separate it out. So what we want to do, right, is we want to make a distinct window that is going to manage the, co the contacts that we saw when we first started. So let's do that. Let's make a new file. So I'm going to do command N, OS 10 source, Coco class. We're going to make an NS window controller with a nib, and I'm going to call this main window controller very kind of a bland name. You could also call this contact window controller, contacts window controller, something like that. Just make it something that's descriptive, um, you know, that explains kind of what it is. I think main window controller in this case is descriptive enough because it's saying that it's the, the main window that you're going to be interfacing with. And given that it's a contacts app, you really are only interfacing with that window and maybe preferences or something else. Okay, so now that we have this, um, what I want to do is customize a little bit this main window controller. The two things that I like to do uh, first is I select this view on the window controller and I add a layer to it, uh, mostly just because I think everything should be pretty much layer backed on your any new Cocoa applications, so I just layer back any windows that I have, or I should say the views of the windows. Um, there's just bugs that can arise generally if you don't have this on and you try to do animations, so I just enable them by default. Um, and there's just performance reasons too. The other thing is the window. Uh, we're trying to make our window look like this. And to do this, I want my uh, my title bar to be part of the content view. So there's a new option in, I think, El Capitan or Yosemite, I think it's Yosemite actually, that you can put the, con uh, the title bar in the content view. So if I click on this full size content view option, you'll notice that the title bar goes down into the content view, and that's what I want to have happen. Now, in my window did load, this is sort of where I would do the initialization for this particular window. And what I want to do for this window is I want to set up some title bar stuff. So I want the title bar to be transparent, and I also don't want the title to appear. So I'm going to set the title uh, visibility to be hidden. For whatever reason, this is not a bool, but it only has a hidden and a visible option. Uh, don't ask me why. The, um, maybe it's legacy stuff, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, going out of this, the next thing that I want to do is go back into the app delegate. And the app delegate is still the place where I launch code. So, I'll delete this comment here because it actually just copied incorrectly. But uh, we want to make a new uh, main window controller. And to do this, I'm going to say main window controller open close parentheses. Now, if I just called this, it actually is not going to load the nib. It's going to load just the controller itself, and I don't want this to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a convenience initializer. And I did this all the time in Objective-C. However, in Swift, this is somewhat iffy because initializers are weird. But um, we can say self, window, nib name, and the name of the window. I'm just going to copy the class name. And now we have uh, the, the correct window name that matches the nib. So the point of this is that when I call just main window controller with empty parentheses, it should load the nib along with uh, the window controller. All right, so now all I have to do is in application to finish launching, I just want to say show window. And I can just say show window nil, and that should be good. So let's go ahead and run this to make sure we've got we've done everything correctly up to this point. And as you can see, we have a new window that appears, right? And we can move it around. We've got ability to adjust it and all that good stuff. All right, so we have a working window. Great. The next step is to figure out how to get these sort of two views, right? So we have basically a view controller on the left and a view controller on the right. That is essentially what I want to try and create right now. So I'm going to go ahead. Again, I just hit Command N to make a new file. OS 10 source, Coco class, we're going to do an NS view controller. I'm going to make a nib along with this. And the class is going to be what I'm going to call contacts uh, list view controller. All right. And this is a view controller that manages a contacts list or a list of contacts, however you want to look at that. All right. So we have our contacts list view controller. And I'm going to go over to the nib here so that I can do some adjustments. So what I want to do is just kind of make it the, the shape that I expect it to look like sort of when it you know loads in. Um, on this view, I'm going to set the, the actual uh, view to, well, actually, I'll do this later, and I'll, I'll come back to why I did that. But 
let's just leave the, the layer off for now. Let's just customize everything that I want to put in this view. So again, this is the left uh, contacts list view, so I need a table view. So I'm going to add in a table view here. Resize this. And now I also want a visual effects view. And we'll just plop that in. Make sure you don't drop it in the table view, but make sure you're dropping it in um, you know, the right spot here. Uh, one thing I'm going to make sure is that my height is going to be 50 on this. And we'll just stretch this out so that it fits along the top. There we go. Um, the next thing is I want to change the visual effect view so that it's not behind the window, but it's within the window. So it's actually going to show the contents of the table view. That's what I'm trying to go for uh, to remind you of what that looks like. If I highlight this, right, you can see sort of the blue outline that goes behind that visual effect view. Just something that I thought was, uh, I, I meant to make a tutorial on this, so I figured I'd talk about it in this. Okay, so we've matched it with the window. Um, I want the appearance to be vibrant light. I don't want it to be vibrant dark. So those are the two things you have to change within window and vibrant light. Now I want to set up all my layout constraints here as well. Actually, before I do that, let's customize our, our table view a little bit more. The border on our scroll view, I don't actually want there to be one. So I'm going to select the, the no border option there. Then I want to select the table view. And the table view, I only want to have one column. I don't want it to have any headers, and I'm just going to leave it like that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to uh, this when we customize it a little bit more on the next tutorial. But for now, let's uh, move this scroll view so that it's at the top of this view. So make sure it gets to the top of this view here. And it's kind of weird. It should balance out there, but... Um, Oh, got some weird stuff going on here. All right, make sure it's centered on your uh, your view. Once you have that, uh, let's add some constraints. So on the visual effect view, I want it to be uh, top, left, right, and I want the height to be 50 as well. So add those four constraints. Then on the scroll view itself, I want it to be 0, 0, 0, 0 all around the outsides, right? I want it to stretch to fill, basically. So I'll add those four constraints, and there we go. All right. So the next thing that we have is uh, we don't we we want our table view content to actually be below the visual effect view, and currently it's actually pushed above. So what I want is I can uh, selected the scroll view. I can go under the attributes inspector here to content insets, and under automatically adjust, I'll disable that and change it so that the top is offset by 50 points from the top. So basically offset far enough off of our uh, our visual effect view. All right, the last thing that I'm gonna do is add a label in. So let's drag in a label. I'm gonna change the label to be uh, contacts. I'll make the font a little bit larger. Let's just say 18 for this. Um, if I want the label to be uh, the size that it actually fits. I just hit command equals and that will automatically fill the label to be the right size. And now I can go down to the align option at the bottom and horizontally and vertically align that label. All right, the last thing that I want to change here is that you'll notice this view is red and it looks mad and it's yelling at us because the uh, view doesn't detect that there's any layer uh, backing it. And so to get rid of this warning, we can basically just turn on uh, the layer backing for this view. So with you know the backing view selected, I'm going to select that view and now you'll see that it goes away and it's happy once again. Okay, so that's it. That's all we're gonna do for this tutorial in this section. Uh, we'll come back to this when we return in the next tutorial about how we can actually customize the table view contents and other things. All right, the last thing that we need to do is actually put all these view controllers together, right? We have the view controller for the contacts list view controller, and we also want the contact uh, view controller that's from uh, the contacts framework. So I'm going to import the contacts UI framework, which includes the uh, contact view controller. Then I um, want to have, um, what I was going to say, I want to now create the split view that contains both of these view controllers. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say let split VC gets an S split view controller. I'm just going to create an empty one for now. 
Now I'm going to create the other two view controllers that I want to put in this. So I'm going to create the contacts list VC and I'm going to create a contacts list VC or view controller. And one thing you'll note about this is that I didn't make any convenience initializer for the contacts list view controller. And this is actually a feature that they put into NS view controller in particular is that it will load a nib that has the same name as the, the class name. I don't know why they didn't do this for NS window controller. I just blame Coco, I guess, um, because nothing is ever consistent. Um, then we have the contact view controller that I want to bring in. And this is the CN contact view controller. This is brought in from the contacts UI uh, framework. So CN contact view controller is what I want to use. And now we need to put these guys or add them to the split view. So I can just say split uh, VC dot add split view item. We use NS, this class called NS split view item to basically construct these things. And there's a few initializers on NS split view item. We can use the, um, the, so what I want to use for the first thing is content list view controller. So it just basically sets up some nice presets for how um, different view controllers can behave. And there's some nice features if you use a sidebar view controller, for example, there's a feature for automatically uh, dismissing the sidebar and things like that. So there's some nice features kind of built into this that you might want to use, but it's up to you. Um, all right, so we want to add our contacts list VC as this item. And then I want to add another item. And this item is just going to be a standard view controller, which is going to contain the contact VC. Lastly, I'm going to add this split view controller to the window, right? So I can say window dot content view controller gets split view or split VC, right? So we're taking the split view controller and we're setting it on the content view controller of the window. And that is it. That is all I have to do to get the, at least the overall structure for this particular application. So if I, I look at this now and I build it, you'll notice there's some uh, funky things actually going on with uh, the contacts uh, view con or the contact view controller on the right. I am actually just going to blame Apple on this one because I don't think um, it's actually doing the right thing. So what it's currently uh, I, my theory is just that it's it's basically like a layer hosted view that doesn't happen to be updated unless um, there's a particular call made to it. But I think I think basically the the view resize settings are are not correct on the the contact view controller itself. But um, I'm just going to blame Apple for that one unless I come up with some you know kind of weird hack to make it resize correctly. But in theory, if it's in a split view controller, it should automatically move with the content. So that's it should be default but it's for whatever reason not with this view controller but aside from that little bug in the context view controller we can see that we have correctly set up uh, what we expect right we have our contacts uh, list view controller on the left obviously there's no table view yet but there's no content I should say and then on the right there is the the contacts view controller and our title bar looks as you would expect it to look Okay, so that is just the general overview of how I would approach a simple uh, contacts application anyway, just getting you familiar with using different things, right? Use window controllers, use view controllers, and just put the logic for those things uh, where they need to be. In the next one, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the rest of this contacts application, and then we'll conclude uh, from there. All right, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.